today's video <clears throat> excuse me is going to be a little different now i've gotten a lot of requests it seems to be the most common requests that i get uh, are related to these videos um people asking basically so what does it mean to be a magician in regular life you know uh specifically how does being a magician change my life um oh boy um i've been a little reluctant to uh answer that question because it's it's rather personal but it seems like this is the place to get personal and something that i see lacking in most of the uh, online uh, hermetic related videos is personal connection between people <laughs> so i've decided that i will talk about what my day is like from um perspective of my hermetic practice so here we go um first i want to say that this is not about bragging this is not about trying to leave you with an image of me this is just about how hermetics fits into my life on a daily day-to-day -day basis and as you can imagine uh that's pretty much all of every day <laughs> so i had to write it down make a list here so i get up in the morning about 6 a.m generally because that's when my kitty gray demands his breakfast um so i'm up a little while trying to fit back into uh, my body and existence and then i turn on the computer and the first things that i check are my facebook for correspondence and my email for correspondence and that sort of begins my day in essence um i usually am not answering correspondence at that hour uh, which is a good thing um but it's it goes into my head and i'm processing it throughout my morning um i also turn on the news and check out what's happening in the world because i feel personally that that's important for me to know uh, what's going on in the world um then after eating breakfast i usually go for a walk with my mom um we go out to a place called um oh gosh muscat creek here in cloverdale and it's a beautiful trail that follows the a creek a little creek right now it's a dry creek but when it has water and it's just so beautiful so lovely um there's lots of trees lots of oak trees and other trees uh lots of flower wild flowers etc uh it's a paved trail mm, probably a half mile walk all told there and back and this this is a chance for me to interact with trees and flowers and insects and birds and little animals and people because a lot of people walk out there um in the morning and they especially walk their dogs and so this is a chance for me to interact with every dog i meet i get down on my knees and truly interact with the dogs um and give them what healing they might need at the time um it's just it's a time that feeds me uh this interaction with nature and uh the small animals um and the people uh it's always an opportunity to make someone smile to start their day off uh well um then then i come home to and i'm pretty much a home body let's put it that way um the 
first thing I dive into generally um, is whatever correspondence has come in in the morning. Um, sometimes that's just a few minutes, sometimes it's an hour or two. Uh, and that's, you know, typing. Um, and that's, that's an important part of the magic that, that I do, you know, and I have this facility with words and explaining things. Um, that's magical, basically. Um, and uh, I will then get to work on whatever uh, magical tool I'm making at the moment, like right now I'm making protectors. And when I work, that is a magical act, the, from in beginning to end, that is a magical act. So it's a, a very long magical working, each one for me is a long magical working that can last from one to three weeks, say. Um, depending on what I'm making for someone. So that goes on throughout the day, and I'll take breaks in that to um, answer any correspondence that comes up during the day, um, and go through video chats. I have several video chats in a week, um, maybe one to three, and three has been about the most I've done in a day, but. Um, and several days in between without any video chats. So that's also, for me, part of my magical work. Um, sort of being a companion to people who are on this path um, and helping them out in any way that I can. Um, I might also, during the day, work on my videos like this one. Um, and that doesn't take too terribly long to shoot a video. A um, major portion is in rendering and loading it up on YouTube. Um, so that, that, you know, once every week or so, or so, uh, I'll be doing a video. Uh, then throughout the day, uh, I'll have sometimes occasion to do some work with TMO or the Catholic Brilliance, um, you know, someone needs me, um, something is happening um, in the world um, that, that needs uh, my attention, shall we say. Um, so, you know, that's occasional throughout the day and varies radically from day to day. Uh, and also there's the people that I encounter during the day are always um, opportunities to uh, practice magic. Um, the magic of a smile, the magic of a, a witty comment, you know, all these things that, that can greatly impact someone's life in the moment. Um, so there's always those opportunities. Um, if I'm making gate makers, or when I was making radiators, I was spending time tuning crystals, uh, and that takes, you know, an hour or so to tune either one of those. Uh, so I do that during the day. Um, so my day kind of flows like that, doing what needs to be done and what's presented in front of me on that particular day. And it varies quite a bit from day to day. Then, at night, when I go to bed, I do a lot of my work um, when I go to bed. I live alone, so you know, it's not an interruption of sleeping with somebody, unfortunately. Uh, so, now, the first thing I do is a series of protections. Um, I draw the Catholic brilliance around me and then project it around other people. Um, there are three people, four people rather, that I'm protecting specifically in relation to the pandemic. Um, they are all very vulnerable, either uh, because of health conditions or because of jobs that they have. And these are people all over the world. Um, I have two that I protect just because I love them. Um, 
uh, and well, three actually, just because I love them. Uh, and a fourth person uh, I'm uh, protecting because he feels that he's being uh, psychically attacked. Um, so I go through these protections. I, I use my golems in that. All three of my golems are put to use in that process of protecting. Um, yeah. Then I do some work with TMO. Um, often it will be healings for specific people. Um, and one project that I've been doing for, well, all of this year and part of last year, um, I live in California, Northern California, uh, which should equal fire, <laughs> wildfire. Um, and it's a big problem here. We're having a severe drought. Everything's very dry. It's been hot and dry. The humidity is starting to really creep down. And so the danger of fires is very present and very immediate. Where I live here in Cloverdale, there we are surrounded by woods, basically. So we're like, if we get a big fire through here, uh, the town of Cloverdale will likely be one of those you see on the news reports that is just totally burnt and gone. Um, so, um, there are also, oh, I just love this area. These for miles and miles around from Laytonville to Casadero, basically, uh, is of great concern to me. So I'm using TMO on a very large scale to protect this area from uh, wildfires. Um, and so far it's worked very well. Uh, from the time I started to the present day, there have been no large fires in that area. Um, I started it uh, right uh, after the lightning fires that started all over the area. So there were fires going when I began, but those fires stopped their advance and the areas that I was protecting uh, survived basically unscathed um, or very minor damage. Um, so it's working out rather well. Um, then I will go usually into a period of just contemplation you know, thinking about video I'm going to do next, or some question that's presented itself, some problem that needs to be solved, some answer that needs really careful consideration. Um, so, a period of contemplation. And then, I wander. And this is, this is one of those things that feeds me, like uh, walking along uh, Muscat Creek in the morning, uh, mental and astromental wandering. Uh, it's mostly mental wandering that I do. Um, I will wander to other worlds. I've seen some truly incredible places and, and met some really interesting beings. Um, my favorite, most recent beings were people who People, I mean, not people in the sense of you and I, human people, but people, people, beings uh, that have personality, um, that, that exist as clouds of, of gas, um, mists almost, um, with uh, space between the molecules of their body. And one of the things they love to do is to go through each other so that their mist goes through the mist of the other and like between the molecules, their molecules pass. And it's such an um, ecstatic uh, feeling um, that they experience. They're, really incredible. Another, the, uh, the um, tornado 
uh, like beings, uh, a sentient awareness that takes form in a whir whirlpool of air and, and dust in this particular planet, um, of varying sizes. They're really in incredible. Um, and then there is another type of being that travels from star to star and feeds off the uh, essence of each, each star has like a flavor um, and they, they feed off these different flavors of stars throughout the universe. I don't know of any place they, they don't go. And they travel instantaneously from star to star because they know the stars and that's all it takes is the thought of being at this other star and there they are. Um, it's, it's really incredible really uh, wonderful experiences with mental wandering. Um, I also will sometimes uh, astro-mental wander around my house, around the neighborhood. I like looking at it from above. I like also stepping outside at night to experience the rain um, or the crisp, clean air. Um, the darkness and the, the billions of stars, but I have to go up quite a ways to, to see stars here, um, etc. Then, sort of to end my day, I go to one place. It's a very special place to me. Um, I discovered it in my work with the infinitely finite present moment. Uh, that moment, that place where, or that moment when all change ceases. It's like the moment, that micro, uh, infinitely finite moment uh, between one change and the next. Um, it's really a philosophical point but it exists, too. Um, going there, I discovered a doorway that uh, leads me, and my understanding is that it will lead each person to a different place, uh, to their place, as it were. Um, but I go through this door, and I'm in the branches of this huge, huge oak tree, uh, grandmother oak tree, and she is so huge, uh, and she feeds the land, all of the land, she, she makes the land, as it were, and sitting next to me is a crow, um, and we converse, and when I come down out of the tree, there are all these other animals, they're all earth animals. It's a very earth-like uh, um, environment. Um, and there's all these other animals that are friends as well. Uh, and we uh, go places together, we travel together, or just sit and enjoy each other's company. Um, this place is in sunlight throughout only part of the year, the majority of the year, but from about the winter solstice onward to the spring equinox, and it varies a little in there, um, it's in darkness, and it's a very different environment then. Um, but that's generally where I, I end my day, um, and, you know, let my body go off into sleep and, uh, and then start all over again the next morning, 6 a.m., kitties, breakfast time. <laughs> um, uh, there's also one other thing that it's throughout the day and throughout the night, I am always self-aware. I'm aware of myself, of my character. So I am always um, working 
with my character, the manifestation of my character, and just aware of how I am, who I am, what I am, um, what is being presented of myself, etc. So, that's a day in life. <laughs> so, that's it for this week. <laughs> Hope that was interesting. Bye-bye. <laughs>